After assigning the rule table, we can begin grading the pattern. Here we will go through some of the most common grading functions. I will show the grading functions on a very simple piece, a square 10 times 10 cm. We can find the grading functions at the drop-down menu in the top. The first thing I will do after assigning a rule table is to add grade points to the piece. I will go to Grade, Modify Rule and Add Grade Point. Then I can select the location for the new grade point. It could be, for instance, 3 cm from the end of the line. And I will now see this symbol for a grade point. This is a triangle with the peak turning down. We also recognize the split point, the end points of a line, which is the opposite symbol. It's a triangle with the peak turning up. If I choose to add a grade point to a split point, it will have both symbols in the same point, like this. I will add grade points to all the points on my piece relevant for grading. In this case, I will just add it to the corners. Like this. And now I will be able to decide the grading of each point. I will do that by going to Grade, Create, Edit, Edit Delta. And I will start, for instance, with this point. And the following window appears. I can see all my sizes that I have defined in the rule table from 34 to 48. And the base size is in this gray shade. So you can see that which one is the base size. By default, the grading is zero between all the sizes. Be aware that the lines are covering between sizes. So this first line, for instance, is the grading from size 34 to size 36. If I want to have a grading of 1 cm, for instance, in X and Y, I will start by clearing the columns, saying 1, update, and it will automatically fill in all the other sizes. Clear Y, 1, and update. Now I can see the grading changing on the piece. I can choose in the function to go on to the next grading point, which will be this one, or the previous grading point, which will be this one. So this way I can walk from point to point. I will now grade this point and I will choose to have this grading only in the X direction. It's important to clear the column at first. If I only type one here, the rest of the columns will stay like this. I will clear the column, type one centimeter, update, and you can see now the grading is in the X direction only. The Y direction steps are still zero. I will go on to the next and I will type this one. I would like it, the piece to get five millimeters bigger. And since this is the minus direction on the X axis, I will type minus 0 0.5. Update and OK looks a little bit funny. Now, if I know that I will need the same grading for more than one point, I can copy the rules from one point to the other. And I will do that by grade, modify rule, and I can choose to copy the whole rule or I can choose to copy only the X or Y rule. I will begin by copying the whole rule from this point and I will select the reference point. And the target point could be this one. And then it will apply the same grading as here to the other point. If I want to copy X or Y steps only, for instance, I would like to have the X step from this one copied to this point. I go to grade, modify and copy X rule. Selecting the reference point and the target point. Now, in this case, it wouldn't make a difference because it didn't have a step in the Y direction. But now I could copy the Y step from this one. Great. Modify. Copy Y rule. Reference point and target point. Like this. 
If I want to grade a specific point in a specific distance from another grade point, it could be, for instance, for a zipper length or a facing width. Let's say if I wanted to grade this point, so it's three centimeters from this point in all the smaller sizes up until 42, and then four centimeters from this in from size 44 and up. I will be able to go to grade, create, edit, specify distance, selecting the location for the grade point. This one. And then it's asking for a grade point to measure distance from. Could be this one. And I can now decide the distance in each size. If I type zero and update like this, it will now grade so it has the same distance in all sizes. If I go to the same function, grading this one, measured from this one, I can also choose to have the same distance up until size 44, for instance, and then growing with one centimeter. Here it's important that I remember to say zero again here, otherwise it will continue to grow one more centimeter for the next sizes. Like this. And we can see the distance here is three centimeters and then it's growing to four centimeters up here. If I want to check my line lengths, I would go to nine, modify and split to be able to measure the lines separately. And then I can use the grade measure line function, measuring this small line piece. And I will get the measurements from each of the sizes, three centimeters and four centimeters from size 44 and up. This also makes it possible to measure and compare two lines. If I go to grade, measure line, and I measure this line, approving with the wheel, comparing to this line. Then I will get line length number one, line length number two, and also the difference between the two line lengths for each size. If you want to create a new line on a graded piece, for instance, line, create line and digitize, you have the possibility to mark this one, add grade rules on intersections. If I, for instance, make a line from this grade point, and I would like it to be straight down to this point, like this. It will automatically add a grade point to the perimeter line in the intersection point if there is not a grade point there already. You can see here it will take the grading from the grade point. Here I didn't have a grade point, so it will automatically take the rule as an average of this rule and this rule and add this grade point both uh, to the end of the internal line and on the perimeter line. If I want this to be graded straight, I can copy the X rule from this point to the end of my internal line, like this. Here you can see that now the end point of the internal line is graded, but we still have the grade point on the perimeter line. So I will copy again from this point to the same point but on the perimeter line like this and now all the points will be joined in the same point. When we are grading we have this always both marked which means that always apply rules for joint end points. This only works for perimeter lines like this. If you have internal lines meeting a perimeter line they must always be graded separately. You can choose to see the grading like now and you can also choose to switch it off. We do that by view, grade and clear nest. Then the piece will still be graded but we will not be able to see it. We can switch on again, show all sizes like this. We can also choose to see only some of the sizes show selected sizes for this piece and we would choose to see the base size and the biggest size for instance. Then we can see only two of the sizes shown as a nest. If 
if you create a new piece like this instead of assigning the rule table you can copy the size line from one piece to the other that is done in grade copy size line selecting the reference piece and the target piece and you can see now the base size here is also size 38. It's also possible to copy a rule from one piece to the other. Modify and copy grade rules, for instance, from this one to this one. That can be done without adding grade points first. If you copy a rule from one point to another point, it will automatically generate a grade point.